Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I will be discussing with you the development of traditional tools for classroom-based assessment using multiple choice. So first, what is multiple choice? Multiple choice items are a key type of test item used in standardized tests, assessing various learning targets efficiently. So yung multiple choice is mostly used in usually board exams, um, civil service examinations, entrance exams. It is widely used in standardized testing because it covers uh, various learning targets. Next is the format in making multiple choice assessment. So, ano nga ba yung format sa, paga sa paggawa ng multiple choice assessment? So, first is the items begin with a stem. Ano yung stem? Yung stem is the question or incomplete sentence and three or more alternatives. That is the choices. The alternatives contains one correct or best answer and two or more destructors. So yung three alternatives is yun yung um, choices and uh, yung, yung destructors na gagawin mo is dapat hindi siya halata na destructor siya or parang magkapareha lang sila ng meaning ng best answer or ng tamang answer para medyo mapapaisip din yung student mo. Next is the suggestions for writing multiple choice. First is write the stem as a clearly described question or task. For example, the, the question is the legislative branch of the federal government and so, this is a poor question. Why is it a poor question? Because it wasn't stated clearly kung ano ba talaga yung hinahanap or ano ba talaga yung pinupoint out ng question. So, the improved or yung tamang paggawa ng question is it should be which branch of the federal government is responsible for making laws. So, uh, makikita nyo naman, nyo naman na in this question is it is more emphasized. Mas, mas, ano, yung question is like, alam mo kung ano talaga yung hinahanap. Unlike sa first example na, hindi mo alam kung ano yung isasagot mo kasi the question was not stated clearly. Next is, avoid the use of negatives in the stem. So, why is it that we should avoid using the negatives in the stem? Because words just like not or except can cause confusion to students and can lead to anxiety and frustration. And it also takes longer to answer this question. So, for example, which of the following is not a mammal? So, um, as you can see in the question, the word not is wasn't highlighted or bold. So, it could cause confusion because sometimes students doesn't really read the, the questions carefully. They would just look the yung parang ano tawag dyan, um, keywords. Keywords lang yung titignan sa question and then sasagot agad. So, it should be, the question should be, which of the following is a mammal? Diba? Parang mas okay siya basahin or mas okay siya pakinggan kasi mas, and mas madali din siyang sagutan. Kasi, mas nakaka-confuse nakaka kasi yung meron pang mga not or exam. Next is, write the correct response with no irrelevant clues. So, there should not be any difference between the wordings of correct answer and the destructors para mas matas yung knowledge ng mga students. So, for example, in an experiment, the independent variable Non-manipulated is the manipulated variable controlled by the experimenter, confounded, or extraneous. So, the correct answer here is the letter B. As you can see is the difference from the correct answer and the destructors is big. Kasi, mas nangingibabaw talaga yung correct answer or mas napapansin siya because it is more longer, more elaborate, and more elaborated. So, the correct the correct making of the question is, in an experiment, the independent variable is the one that has at least three levels, usually continuous, 
manipulated by the experimenter or controlled so that it is not confounded. Okay, next is do not use a verbatim correct response. So, ano ba yung verbatim? Verbatim is in exactly the same words as were used originally. So, just like kung ano yung nakalagay sa mga textbooks or handouts is yun, yun din yung nilagay mo na response. So, it should be different. For example, what is the capital of France? Next is write the destructors to be plausible yet wrong. Because destructors would, would be useless if they are obviously wrong that students might not even think that they are the possible answers. Just like, for example, which of the following is the largest city in the United States? The destructors were Michigan, London, and Berlin. So, yung London is capital, capital siya ng England and the Berlin is Germany. Yung Michigan naman is somewhere in United States. So, parang halata na masyado na yung answer is New York kasi hindi naman sakop ng United States yung Berlin and London. And saka yung Michigan is hindi siya masyadong naririnig or hindi siya masyadong common. So, parang hindi talaga siya yung tamang sagot. So, the right destructors should be just like this. Which of the following is the largest city in the United States? Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, or Miami? So, the stated cities were like common siya. Um, palagi nating naririnig. So, kapag yung student mo is unprepared while well, taking the test is parang mapapaisip pa muna sila kung saan ba talaga dito yung largest city ng United States. Next is avoid using all of the above none of the above, or other special destructors. Uh, I'm sorry if there are any destructions or ano, yung mga noises na hindi necessary kasi meron kasing pinapagawa yung landlady namin. So, masyado talagang maingay and walang room for any ano na hindi masyadong maingay. Hindi soundproof yung room namin kasi. Okay, so let's continue. Sorry for the advertisement. Avoid using all of the above, none of the above, or other special destructors. It's because, um, parang masyado siyang obvious yung mga all of the above. Kasi pag nakikita mo na tama lahat ng sagot is, alam mo na agad na all of the above. And kapag walang tama, none of the above na agad. So, parang, ano, and other students also, kapag nakikita na lang all of the above is, uh, gagawin nila, yung isasagot nila is yung letter A, B, or C. And then, yung letter D is all of the above, di ba? So, parang kukunin na lang nila yung isa doon. So, nakaka-confuse siya. Sometimes, it's confusing and it also have a negative effect that could cause um, bewilderment and other low-ability students could quickly get turned off of this, these chapters. Next is, use each alternative as the correct answer about the same number of times. So, um, kapag gagawa ka ng tamang sagot, dapat 25% of items is parang same yung letters. Uh, para maiwasan din yung patterns ng tamang sagot. And kasi maraming students na nakukuha nila yung pattern kung ano ba yung next na tamang sagot. And meron din tayong parang saying na kung wala kang masasagot, letter C na lang ang ilalagay, or C for Christ, parang ganun. And sometimes, natatama din. So, it is important na uh, naka-well-distributed yung correct answers mo sa, kung kunwari, A, B, C, D. Dapat well-distributed doon kung saan ba talaga ilalagay yung tamang sagot. So, that's for the last one. Next is assessing knowledge and comprehension. How can test items be modified to assess comprehension instead of knowledge? So, declarative knowledge of terminology and facts is effectively assessed with multiple choice items. And test items can be modified to assess comprehension instead of knowledge by altering the wordings of questions to require students to explain concepts and analyze situations. So, first, ano ba muna yung pinagkaiba ng knowledge and situation? Knowledge is um, about kung ano yung mga facts na alam mo about that certain topics. And while well, comprehension is demonstrated when students understand the essential meaning of a concept, principle, or procedure. 
Okay, next is assessing application. So understanding is shown when students apply their knowledge. They could apply their knowledge to solve problems and new contexts. So <clears throat> um, just like, for example, math problems. So let's say the students memorize the solutions on how to solve that problem. But if they were given the uh, new problem, they couldn't apply the solution or they couldn't, uh, parang hindi nila ma-apply ng maayos or alam nila yung paano yung solution pero hindi nila alam kung paano gawin. So, malalaman mo talaga na 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 naintindihan nila kung paano gawin yun if alam nila yung solution and if they were introduced to new problems, alam nila kung paano rin yun gawin or paano i-apply yung solution. Okay, now, let's proceed to the advantages and disadvantages of using multiple choice assessments. First, on the advantages. It can assess a variety of learning targets, efficient and easy to score and grade, scoring is objective, provides wide content sampling and coverage, it could give students practice for standardized tests, and it can provide diagnostic information about students' misunderstanding. So, dito mo mas makikita kung ano ba yung alam or ano pa ba yung hindi alam ng mga estudyante mo because uh, you could evaluate based on their answers kung saan ba sila mas maraming pagkakamali or saan ba sila mas maraming mali na answers. <clears throat> And then, next to the uh, disadvantages. First is, It is very time-consuming to write, difficult to write good items, and provides limited feedback to students, tends to focus on lower cognitive skills, and it is influenced by reading abil ability and test wiseness, unable to measure some types of targets, and encourages guessing because sometimes pag nawawala na ng gana or pag <clears throat> masyado ng mahaba yung test questions mo and your Um, answers is nawawala na yun ang gana yung students na magbasa and it could encourage it encourage them na ano na lang uh, uh, yung bantot bantot na lang or like uh, kahit ano na lang yung answer na ilalagay nila kasi minsan boring magbasa or nakaka um, nakaka parang nang makatulog na good sila kung magbasa sila sa questions So, so, in conclusion, multiple choice questions play a crucial role in assessing knowledge and comprehension efficiently. Kasi ito yung parang um, nagpe-prepare and it is also widely used, just like what I said earlier. Ito yung most common na ginagamit sa paggawa ng standardized test. So, it could help to prepare the students on their future exams to take and Uh, major exams to take, just like board exams. So, uh, using the multiple choice items could prepare them to that and to assess their various learning the, and also to assess the various learning targets for the students. So, that's all and thank you.